Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Pyro Falcon's Let's Play Extravaganza, where we are playing Cinders. You can get this interactive fiction game through the developer's website. That's Moa Cube. You can check them out in the video description. So in the last episode, we started the ball. Um, Gloria tried to charm the prince, who was a little too mentally agile for her. And when she was challenged about what she likes to do and what she likes to think and what interests her, she balked and had no idea what to do. And as the Akamura pointed out to me between episodes, that relates to the earlier conversation Gloria had with Cinders, that Gloria just doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know how to be her own person, which is tragic. But uh, maybe Sophia can do a better job. So here we go. Good evening, Your Grace. Oh, I do hope I use the right style. Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening, my lady. It is one of the conventional titles used when addressing kings, so no, not Grilly. At least not yet. Oops, looks like I blew it already. I wouldn't worry about that. I never understood all those su subtleties myself, nor cared for them for that matter. I must be really lucky then, since I don't care much for titles myself. Never seen the purpose. You do not? Quite a rare trait for a daughter of a noble house. And much more importantly, daughter of a powerful and ambitious lady. Don't forget, don't forget about women with agendas, your highness. They tend to be pretty hard to overlook anyway. Oh, is that so? Oh yes, quite an overbearing character, that mother of ours. She even made us wear these dresses, you see. Have you ever worn a corset this tight, my prince? <laughs> She's not only being saucy, she totally shut him down. He has nothing to say to that. No, I've never had the chance, opportunity. Oh, neither had I until today. But it doesn't really matter because we all have our roles to play and tasks to fulfill. After all, a single night can change the fate of many. Whole families, great houses, dynasties, etc. I can see you're quite upset, my lady. I'm only the younger daughter, and my mother wasn't born into ladyship, so it's second-hand nobility you're speaking to. You don't have to lady me, my prince. All right, if you say so. So are you here because your mother asked you to come against your will? Yes, that's exactly why I'm here. Because I'm a good girl who's willing to play her part. In that case, would you believe if I said the reason why I'm here is not that different from yours? I guess you could call it a family obligation? Yes, although my oppressive parent is here in spirit alone, his legacy is omnipresent, his influence palpable. I thought the wine tasted funny. <laughs> you want to be mic'd up now? I'm like 20 episodes deep, and now you want to be mic'd up. I'm not complaining, but I'm finishing this out with all my voices, so don't give me any... Don't try to... Nar uh, Bogart my lines. Upstage me, yes. Are you organized there? Okay, your, your mic's hot. She's so adorable. <laughs> she is. I love her. I, I love her so too. She's so snarky. We need to make her real and then marry her. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> oh, you don't have to play that shocked look on me. If you're anything like me and your father was even slightly similar to my mother, a joke like that wouldn't make you blink. You're right. Having spent all my life among people trained to keep up appearances, I picked up all the conventional reflexes. Like acting shocked when someone is making a joke about your dead parent, even though everyone knows he wasn't as good a father as he was a king. I feel lucky already. At least nobody ever forced me into a mold of politeness. I shudder at the thought of someone trying. Such a silly concept, this politeness. Lying to each other in the name of good manners. Now color a bitch. As if honesty was a vice. You are a, you are a very original young woman, you know that? Isn't original one of the categories physicians use when they lock you up in an asylum? <laughs> Technically, I think it's innovative. And I'm serious. I'm glad you're here. I'd love to get to know you better. Oh, sure. Look around. I must shine like a real gem in these murky waters of lies and intrigue. <laughs> Pure and innocent like the morning breeze. Oh, how lovely it must be to be royalty and speak like that all the time, rather than just when you've had too much wine. 
You think so? Unfortunately, I don't really care that much for polished speech coming from anyone who probably wants something from me. As you can see, I'm not really queen material. I'm too stupid to rule over anything. So hold that flood of appreciation and keep flattery to yourself. Thank you. you may she shut him down. Yes. You may be many things, but you certainly don't seem stupid. Yes, yes, my wit, e my wit exceeds even my beauty. Listen, I don't care, all right? I don't want to be here. Nothing you can say will ever change that. Actually, I think I'm just going to go now. I've done my job, made a conversation, and I've beaten, Glo I mean, my sister. I think it's time to finish this. So take care, um, Prince. Nice ball and everything. What the... Heavens. This ball is turning into a madhouse rather rapidly. Too bad, though. This one I started to like. Ah! I ship them! All right. I'm almost there and already. Time to make my grand entrance. I'm nervous. I have those weird heart palpitations right before you know you're facing the final boss. And this is flippin' interactive fiction. Games don't usually do this to me, story-wise. A complete and utter disaster. You have no idea how much this will cost our family. You had a chance to secure the future for yourselves. And for your children and their children. You'll be very unlucky to find a single man in the kingdom willing to court you after the, after the display you gave tonight. And good riddance. What did you say? Mother, look. There's some commotion in the ballroom. I think someone important has arrived. Indeed. Whoever that is, they can't afford to be late, so I'm guessing it really has to be someone important. I'm anxious to see what she looks like. Everyone has gone silent. What is going on? Hello, Cinders. Hot damn. Nice. I want that dress and everything in it. Yeah, that is probably my favorite color, too. I... Oh, God. Saucy. It looks... It's... She... She's the full package. She is the full package. And you know what they say about red on the head. It, 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 means, it means she's pretty. Anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we have a latecomer. And an interesting one at that. That is a mighty fine dress. Wait, is that... I think I know her. I don't applaud her lack of punctuality, but she certainly knows how to make an entrance. I wonder who she might be. I don't think punctuality is among the top qualities expected from a future queen. What about stunning looks? Not a prerequisite, but then again, neither is courage. And this one clearly has plenty of both. Watch out, my prince, she is coming. Good evening, your highness. And to you too, captain. Good evening, my lady. Now, if you please excuse me. My prince? Good evening, my lady. I noticed you had only just arrived. I hope you're not offended by my late arrival, Prince. These halls are so magnificent and tastefully arranged that it would be a crime to disrupt their harmony by careless attire. Not at all, my lady. It often takes an outsider's perspective to make us realize the beauty we have grown to we have grown we have grown accustomed to. Especially if it is tangled with the memories with memories not equally beautiful. I agree. From my experience, people tend to use beauty as a mask for pain. I guess fine halls are no exception. Neither is exquisite wardrobe. Look around you, my lady. The people you see, beautifully dressed and smiling radiantly. Do you think they are happy? They remind me too much of my own family for me to risk claiming they are happy. Who would have suspected it's such a young and serene woman to have such painful experiences? Now, who would have expected, suspected it from a prince? One would rather imagine him to lead a life of bliss. A sharp remark. Indeed, it can be blissful as long as it is ignorant. In truth, a monarch is a servant as much as a ruler. A crown or not, a king is just a man, equally dependent on circumstances and others' expectations, just like the rest of us. It raises an interesting question. Since the king and a commoner differ so slightly, 
Shouldn't the people be allowed to rule themselves? I see you're quite the revolutionary. Did you secretly hope to overthrow me? Why, no. There's nothing secret about it. Besides, rumor has it your majesty is planning a revolution of sorts himself. I must admit you are an intriguing woman, my lady. Very different from the rest of the people who have come here today. They don't seem to be even the slight they don't even seem to be slightly bothered by the masks they have to wear. I wonder if it's so because they wear them every single day as well. But you are different. You may be wearing a mask, but you speak to me plainly and honestly, risking being misunderstood or simply rejected. I can appreciate that, even if you did leave me a bit flabbergasted. I know exactly what you mean, your highness. Being raised in a place filled with deceit and spite, I learned very well the value of masks. When threatened, people will, will rather forget who they are than risk being hurt. And if their surroundings require it, they will lose themselves forever, only to survive. We are all slaves to convention, from a servant to a lord. I must admit, I find the dictum terrifying that all of us are merely actors on some stage set out for us. Be it others or fate, being determined by things we can't control is frightening. I know it all too well. You speak of your family. I am. It isn't a light story, your highness. Definitely not a topic for a polite and charming conversation to make the time pass more pleasantly. I would like to hear about it nevertheless if I'm not asking too much. Please, tell me about your family, my lady. How could I refuse you, my prince? Well, my mother died in labor, bringing me into this world. My father eventually remarried a woman who already has two daughters. He died soon after that. So now I live with a stepmother and her two daughters. That is strange. I've never heard of a noble house with three daughters and no father. I recall one family of a widow with two daughters, though. How is it possible, my lady? Car- I mean, stepmother, doesn't see me as one of her daughters. She allows me to stay in her house under one condition. I work as a servant for bed and board. Those who are familiar with the family know of my existence. As for others, I wouldn't be surprised if she told everyone she has two daughters and that is that. That's unbelievable! I did warn you about this topic. It isn't very entertaining. No, I'm glad you told me about it. It showed me how ignorant I still am, and how little I know about my own realm. Well, in that case, I'm glad you asked me about my life. Look at me babbling like a lunatic. You must be wondering whatever happened to royal manners. I forced you to speak about things which you must find painful during a ball. When we're supposed to be take taking our minds off unpleasant things. Please, allow me to make amends. Would you do me the honor? Oh, I'm not really a dancer. Don't worry, my lady. I will show you. Well. <laughs> alright. Alright, maybe I can learn something from you as well, my prince? Is this alright? You're doing fine, my lady. This isn't as difficult as I expected. Not that I had expected to be dancing with you, my prince. And yet, here we are. It feels very natural, too. Who knows, maybe it was fate that brought the two of us together. Fate. And what is it that really brought me here tonight? Do you truly believe it was some mystical force? I can imagine getting here must have been very difficult for you, considering your situation. To put it mildly, yes. But I wouldn't call it fate, my prince. To the contrary, if it was up to fate, I'd be cleaning dishes this very moment. No, your highness. The only reason I'm here is because I do not believe in any force other than my own ability to influence the world around me. I choose to shape my life in any way that I can, and take responsibility for the consequences of my actions. Having it any other way is cowardice. A commendable attitude, my lady. This may not be the wisest thing to say at the moment, but I'll say it anyway. I consider myself lucky to have met you tonight, my lady. Now smoosh faces together and kiss. <laughs> Luck or not, I'm glad as well. Very glad to be here with you, Prince. Have I complimented your eyes already? 
Strange, I can't seem to remember. Neither can I. Let's assume you haven't. I can't get enough of looking into them. They have these amazing dancing sparks inside them. They suit you more than well. They suit, they suit you more than well. They speak of wit and intelligence. Now I'm sure you haven't complimented my eyes. Please do continue. What else do you find attractive? I will then. I adore watching your lips as well. They move so gracefully when you speak, as if conveying a promise. And what promise have you read from them? I dare not say it. Let's move on. Your neck, skip the neck, prince. What about my chest? What? That was a little direct for senders. Okay. Chest is not the word I'd use. And what word would you prefer? I... I think we should get to know each other better before we switch to a more colloquial, colloquial vernacular. I'd love to get to know you better, my lady. That whole thing was code for nice tits. <laughs> you will have your chance, my prince, if you're persistent enough and constant in your ambition. But we tend to undervalue things we achieved effortlessly. Let me give you an obstacle, my prince. You may thank me later. You really are incredible, my lady. And you wouldn't have it any other way, my lord. Good night, and thank you for this unforgettable evening. Man, that was intense, and went off in a direction I slightly didn't expect. So we will see the fallout from the ball in tomorrow's episode, which will probably be the last one of this playthrough. But anyway, we will see you tomorrow for another episode. Thanks for watching, everyone. Your mic. Do you want to close with a yay? Yay! I closed with a yay. Are you happy?